Welcome everyone to the fifth Tulane or fifth installment of the Tulane School of Architecture lecture series for fall 2021. Uh, debate, delete, reboot, being wrong in times of change. This lecture series is meant to highlight the unintended outcomes, contrarian thinking, and humility of learning something new in the course of research and practice. Tonight's lecture is the annual William K. and Nancy Proctor Turner lecture. And we'd like to thank our donors who and their continued support in honor of the former Tulane School of Architecture Dean and Professor William K. Turner. Tonight, we are joined by Washington Farhado for a lecture entitled Reshaping Rio. After this presentation, I'll be joining Washington for a further conversation, and then we'll open it up to questions and answers. My name is Jesse Keenan, and I'm an associate professor of real estate, and it's really my great pleasure to welcome Washington Farhado tonight, a, a friend, a colleague uh, who I've known for a number of years, and when I was thinking about this lecture series, uh, Washington was one of the first people who came to mind as an architect and urbanist dedicated to the advancement of Brazilian cities. He's the president of the, uh, was the president rather of the Rio World Heritage Institute. And from 2009 to 2016, served as the mayor's special advisor for urban issues at one of the really most critical times for Rio de Janeiro, particularly in advance of the Olympics. He's developed innovative solutions for Rio City, pushing the definitions of historic preservation and architecture towards exciting place um, as a design platform. He was a 2019 Loeb Fellow, among other things, and formerly served as a visiting research at the David Rockefeller Center for Latin American Studies. He's the author of two books, Rio's Urban Transformation and Rio's Avenue. And this year, Washington was appointed as planning commissioner and president of Pareja Presos Institute of Urbanism. And he's in charge as commissioner of preparing the cities, its new master plan, its economic recovery, its urban recovery for Rio's downtown, as he'll talk about tonight. And in many aspects, I'm just so thrilled to welcome Washington here this evening. Rio de Janeiro is one of the world's most important cities. And in recent years, particularly the last decade, it has been the site of tremendous architectural and urban experimentation with Istanbul and Tokyo, Rio de Janeiro, and many cities really on the front lines of innovation. So welcome, Washington, and thank you very much for uh, joining us this evening. Thank you for having me, Jess. I'm, I'm really pleased to be here and so thrilled uh, for the opportunity to share my experience with you and, and all the, the audience in the Tulane School of, of Architecture. I, I really love this definition of, that you guys gave to the, to the series of lectures, debate, delete, reboot. Um, uh, and I, I try to follow that uh, when I organize my presentation. And so let's no, let's start my presentation. So um, I call it my presentation of reshaping real because I want to. Uh, I would like to show to you how uh, my how I develop my career engage with urban issues in the city of Rio, but especially uh, what I believe that is something that is common to my, the, the, my generation and, and as um, the generation of architects that I belong in, in not only here, but also in the country. Uh, I really like this Kenneth Frampton definition for the Brazilian practice. Um, somehow in Brazil, uh, amid all the potential of the country and all the opportunities that the architectural education gave us. Uh, as I, I, I must tell you that, that we in Brazil, we are uh, educated into a five years uh, uh, education as architect and urban planner. So basically uh, after the school, we became a full licensed, uh, licensed architect you can do everything, although you don't have the, the, 
the experience, but at the moment that you left the school, you can just uh, uh, won a, a competition like happened to myself and then be in charge of a, a, a really important uh, designs and, and contracts. Um, but this huge potential of, of practice, that means also huge potential for failure. And that means also that uh, our our design definition in the country, it's also related to political issues. It's one, a nation still into formation. And, and I, I think that that's, that's the case of, uh, that's the case for myself and for my practice in my career. And then I would like to invite you to, to know a little bit more about the history of Brazil and also the history of Rio and how the design practice became so also entang so entangled with, uh, with political issues. So I would like to start in 1984. Uh, that's the, the, one of the most important political uh, uh, moment in the history of Brazil, uh, when we were finally leaving the dictatorship and then there's the civic movement fighting for the right to vote. Um, and at that time, um, not only Rio, this picture is uh, Rio's downtown, but the most of the biggest Brazilian cities, and also in the, the small side cities, everybody was uh, on the streets and, and asking for the right to vote. That was a really excited moment. And at that time, I was something around 11, 12, 12 years old. I'm not really understanding, but it's something that really put a mark on, on, on my generation. Uh, and, and then I became, uh, at the age of 16, I, I vote for the first time to president. And I voted the first time uh, together with my mother uh, she was also voting for the first time in his uh, in her uh, her lifetime, and that's something so unique in the history of the country. Consider myself and my generation the first one that got uh, access to the right to vote, and and that at that time it was a very optimistic time for the country and for politics and for the whole society. Uh, but then in 2013, once again, in the same place, the same march, the same complaints, public complaints and public riots, uh, after a long time of a progressive government, uh, something was not so good for the Brazilian society, also related to its hosting uh, the, World, the FIFA World Cup, also hosting the Olympics, uh, also complain uh, against corruption. And then since 2013, we are living to uh, such a type of political mess, everything so confused. And at the very beginning, that it sounds like uh, a social complaint for better politics and then like a nightmare, we are having the worst of politics right now. Um, so, but what happened from 1984 to 2013? A lot of things changed in the country. Uh, we achieved democracy, we achieved a better economic condition, stability. After a long time, we achieved a lot of social inclusion. But in my opinion, uh, the issues related to urban planning, housing policies, are they are not still uh, so good conserved and practiced and implemented and so i my generation it's considered the generation of the new democracy and that was the the top record album top hit album at that time in 1984 uh, it was the band called Blitz, somehow similar to B-52s. Uh, and it was a really exciting moment for planning in Brazil. Uh, city like Salvador, 
was hiring um, Lina Bobardi uh, to do the master plan for downtown. In the city of Sao Paulo, the biggest city in the country at that moment, was hiring a huge master plan also for downtown to change the landscape, to change the quality of the streetscapes in downtown. And, and also Rio. And the city of Rio was doing, at that time, it was finished a comprehensive master plan to preserve the historic downtown of Rio and also to, to bring back the quality of the architectural landscape for, for the city. But from 1984 till now, the housing is, is still a problem. We still, we still have a lack of housing policies in the country. Although during the progressive time of the Workers' Party and they created this program, the Mia Casa Mia Vida, My House, My Life. And it, it was a massive housing construction, but they missed the point of location. And basically because of the Mia Casa Mia Vida and then just after uh, expand $100 billion in this program, in building more than four million units in the most of the most of the cities in the country, especially in, in the metropolitan areas, what happened that cities uh, had continued to grow into a, into a bad condition in Brazil, and then uh, it's uh, at that time I I start to became very concerned about uh, how to improve quality of housing policies in the country. And when you look to the 27 metropolitan areas in the city, we got the same condition. We got, uh, we got the highest rate of urbanization in the world uh, with more than 19% of Brazilians living in urban areas. Uh, but at the same time, but at the same time, all, all downtowns in different cities in the 27 capitals of Brazil we, we got the same problem. Um, vacant areas, abandoned buildings. Um, we, we have been missing the, the archives of our, our nation in those downtowns. But it's not, it's not only an issue for historic preservation. That means also that we are also missing important museums like happened with the National Museum in Rio. Also, uh, missing housing opportunities and missing the social fabric of the city itself. And so the so well-known celebrated modernity of, of architecture in Brazil, it's also been missed in that way. And that means that till now, after more than 30 years of um, improvements in the Brazil's uh, civil society, we, we still don't understand uh, how housing policies could help to, to could foster a more strong democracy. And I believe that happened because also of a, a design problem that I would like to, to show to you. And from the 80s till now, we, we try everything. We got the best laws in the planet. We got, we had a ministry of cities. Uh, it started and now it and we promote a lot of laws, but the housing issues in Brazil didn't change. Bec why that happened? And that's my, my uh, intellectual uh, uh, curiosity uh, in the recent years. It's, I believe that happened because also of the, some responsibility, responsibility of architects in that matter, uh, especially the definition of a modern nation. As maybe you know that, maybe you don't know, but Le Corbusier was really important in Brazil for, and also for Brazilian cities. Le Corbusier uh, came to the country in 1929 and then in 1932, and just after uh, established uh, his ideas in, in Europe. And then Brazil was a very open space to Le Corbusier's ideas of, for urban planning. And we create a new city, Brasilia, the capital of the country, uh, removing the, the, the political capital from Rio to the, a new city in the, the hinterland of the country. Uh, 
And, and Brazil, it became not only a new capital, but it became also a new political value. And all the idea of expansions and super blocks and urban planning, uh, modernist ideas for urban planning, uh, not just because of Brasilia, but especially because of this very welcome uh, uh, environment for new uh, ideas. Here is possible to see Corbusier at the side of uh, Lucio Costa and Roberto Burle Marx and all the intellectuals of that time. Modernity became an idea of freedom in Brazil and a way to escape from um, um, rural condition and um, a Nico uh, uh, social condition to then became uh, uh, a big country and a modern country. Here is possible to see Lucio Costa with Oscar Niemeyer. And that's the president of from that time, Juscelino Kubitschek, that was the president of the country. And he creates this, he had a huge impact in, in, in the political ideas. And this type of political ideas are still really present in each elections in Brazil, we still have access to those, um, to his ideas on the ideas of expanding the city, of the urban sprawl, this vastness and quickness, how to solve complex issues very quick. I really love this uh, cartoon from uh, all Richfield uh, showing uh, uh, workers of Brasilia uh, taking a picture with historic background uh, in the middle of the modern environment. Or this, uh, this pamphlet with the map of Brasilia uh, sponsored by an uh, oil company. So these ideas of uh, modernities was also related with the, ex the expansion of the, the exploitation of commodities in the country. And, and somehow uh, we, during the, in this change from the 50s till now, we start to miss some uh, more historical ideas, especially historical ideas very connect with the history of Rio. Uh, he uh, was uh, selected as a World Heritage by UNESCO in 2012. And we got this impressive natural landscape that's all very astonished, uh, always impactful to visitors. I hope you guys could visit the city uh, soon. Uh, but at the same time, the city is also, it's a really symbolic and not only a symbolic, it's a real place to show how the inequality hit really hard the cities at the moment that cities don't have housing solutions. This is the Barra da Tijuca and I'm going to talk a lot about Barra da Tijuca during my presentation. So favelas are uh, still represent one of this, this failure of, of, of housing, uh, comprehension and especially not especially when architects don't understand how the whole complexities of housing productions we still believe that housing is just a matter of design for sure design is one important part in housing implementation but it's really also important to understand the land use and finance solutions and something that I'm, I'm I've tried to become more devoted to these complexities in my in my practice. And this uniqueness of Rio as a place of really intense nature and when how uh, landscape, it somehow be, it became the representation of monuments. It, nature got the role of the built environment in the city of Rio at the moment that nature, it's the, uh, it's the continual uh, presence of reference in the city. And this type of nature had also a really strong impact in, in Le Corbusier. And this idea of the vastness of a continuous uh, building, a curved building associated with the topography of the city, uh, it was also, it, it was not only a sketch, uh, uh, a simple idea of the paper, uh, in Brazil, a simple idea in the paper can be built. And this uh, very famous social housing building called Pedregulho, something like in English, something like uh, Big Rock. Uh, uh, although it's beautiful, but it never worked quite well as a housing solution. 
and it's and but this time of this type of design is still very celebrated in architectural schools in Brazil. And just after uh, doing Brasilia, in, in Brazil was was designed in 1955, and then it was uh, inaugurated in 1960. In 1969, uh, Lucio Costa uh, did a new master plan to the expansion of the city of Rio in for the west zone in this huge area. Uh, in, uh, in the point in the map, you can see the Rio's downtown and the red area, it's the Barra da Tijuca. It's um, a west zone uh, uh, for expansion for the city. And Lucio Costa had this vision of uh, creating a new center for the city just in the middle of this place. And and here you can see it's a, uh, it's a really, really rare uh, sketch by Costa when it's possible to see the plan of the size of Brazil inside of Barra. And that means that at the same time that we were uh, almost completing the, the new capital, a new uh, uh, urban expansion was planned in the city of Rio. In Barra da Tijuca became a very important place for developers in town. Uh, it became a huge opportunity to expand the city. And, but just during the Olympic Games, we were able to finally have a public trans transportation in Barra. And so that's something that really annoys, uh, it's really annoying me. Uh, and, and I have a lot of problems with that, this uh, modernity and simple understanding of urban issues. It's basically uh, uh, designing the landscape of the city like a composition of shapes, but not, not considering the efficiency of infrastructure. Um, the late systems, system in Baja, it's not so good preserved. We still have the sanitation problem in this area, but if you look in the pictures, it's really gorgeous from the outside. Uh, but uh, when we, because of this expansion of the city, we start to lose density in downtown. And, and the Barra da Tijuca had a huge impact in the whole metropolitan area of Rio. This is uh, a map of the metropolitan area. Right now, the city of Rio is 6 million inhabitants. In the metropolitan area, is 12 million inhabitants. And then you can see how the city uh, grew uh, um, following the, ra the, the railways and the public transportation. But then in the late 60s and for the whole 70s and 80s, uh, Barra da Tijuca, it became the, the most important uh, expansion for the city. And just in 20 years, it changed totally the shape of the city and the city became much more sprawled than before. And this sprawl process, it's also, it was also really, um, had also really contribution in formality. And that means that um, the opportunity of land, it didn't create opportunity for a house. And, and from this, uh, the time of the 60s, uh, favelas uh, were uh, removed from the, 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 from the shoreline of the city to, to, to uh, far areas in the west zone. Uh, some of also of these developments was uh, supported by the, the US government during the Kennedy administration, uh, during the program called uh, Alliance for the Progress. Uh, basically the US government was very afraid of uh, the development of communist ideas in, into favelas, and they, they, they support financially not only Brazil, but also Argentina and Colombia and Venezuela uh, in Islam clearance. And we have one Statue of Liberty in one of these uh, uh, housing, uh, in one of these projects uh, that over time it became a favela again. And, and and it's something that Minha Casa Minha Vida repeat over time. So um, basically I start my uh, career uh, 
doing this kind of studies in the school and then uh, my first project, uh, I, I, I was very devoted to, to city issues, working as urban designer. In, in Brazil, we, we can, uh, architect can do everything. So I did a lot of different projects, designs in, in my career, but always looking for uh, city issues and urban design. And one of the most, uh, one of the most exciting projects that I did was in, in the Amazon uh, when uh, a very young, uh, just one year after uh, lived, leaving the school, uh, uh, we won a, a national competition to design a, a, a urban renovation in the city of Belém in the Amazon region. And I lived in Amazon for a, more, a little bit more than one year. And then when they live in the Amazon, um, in the balcony of my apartment, I, I take a picture of this really small plant. And somehow I had some kind of epiphany. I understand that my role as architect, as designer, as urban designer, uh, should be associated with supporting life because life can always prevail, prevail even uh, uh, in the top of a, 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 concrete, uh, a concrete balcony. And then I, I try to change my practice uh, since then, uh, try to be, became more engaged in social issues and how to help to, how design and urban design uh, could uh, help to, 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 to improve quality of life of people. So then I start to do consultations to small cities, sometimes are very poor cities to improve quality of public space to, to, to children from public schools. Also, I devote myself to public space, designing uh, a, a lot of public space, and also to space for culture. I really believe that culture is a, um, it's a, a really important a way of getting people together and, and uh, having important discussions and at the same time, uh, uh, having pleasure in those type of, of gatherings. And I devote myself also to, to design cultural venues. And because of this kind of uh, somehow different kind of practice in Brazil, in, uh, in Brazil's uh, in, uh, landscape, uh, I was invited to be in charge of the historic preservation department in the city of Rio. And, and I really tried to change the idea of historic preservation, try to, to attack to connect historic preservation with complex issues from our time, uh, dealing with the complexity of the urban environment, dealing with humanities and how the symbolic could support uh, the tribe of people in cities, uh, addressing issue, issues of ecology, technology, and avoiding the idea of the historic preservation as preserving the status quo or this idea of character itself as a way to, to not change. So because of this type of uh, uh, approach, I, I was also responsible for uh, the renewal of uh, a lot of uh, cultural venues in the city, like this old moot theater that was transformed into a, a moot purpose a cultural venue. And, and also uh, uh, creating, uh, try to create solutions for increasing uh, uh, quality of life, uh, sometimes in poor neighborhoods in the city of Rio. And, and but I think that the most important thing that I did was a contribution that I that I that I gave to the the transformation of downtown in Rio, especially in the waterfront transformation. And another thing that, is, that during my career, I started to pay attention was the, how finance is really important. And it's something that sometimes architects don't think too much about it. And, and I devote myself to understand all the complexity of financial models and how, how to find a way to, to guarantee, to, to make, to, to implement uh, ideas. Then, uh, during the waterfront of Rio, I, I created a uh, specific law to capture 3% of the building renovation, uh, the, the building potential for that area. 
And at that time, it became one the biggest budget for historic preservation in the country. And because of this very small finance solution, uh, we were able to do uh, a lot of things in downtown. And, uh, and just after we removed the elevated highway and we did uh, new uh, 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 mobility qualities in downtown, also new public space, uh, but because of this finance solution of capturing 3% of the total budget for uh, building renovation in that area, we were able to do a lot of community restoration and bringing back uh, uh, old buildings from the past to the new generation and also uh, uh, fostering uh, new qualities for design, not using historic preservation as a way of, of being, uh, having a fear of uh, new architectural solutions. And sometimes also uh, understanding that it's uh, uh, historic preservation, it's about community. It doesn't matter if the building, it's a high quality standard for architecture, what is important is the, the, how buildings is able to support life. And I, I, I was also responsible to manage archeological funds and that was very complex and very bureaucratic kind of work. And one day in the party area, we discovered the Valongo Wharf. Valongo Wharf, it's, it was one of the most important uh, slavery uh, port for the whole South America. Uh, more than one million uh, people uh, is enslaved is, is from, from uh, Africa arrived in this area. And that's a very complex uh, issue in Brazil. It's really hard to talk about uh, uh, racial issues in, in Brazil till now because we understand ourselves as a mixed society. That's uh, that could be an interesting idea, but at the moment that you have to face uh, the, the negative aspects of structural racism, uh, it was really hard to manage that uh, from the position for, from as, as, as government. Then I understand myself as a, being an architect, being a white man and being in a position of, a, of government. I understand myself as a, a, a pure expression of, 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 of a, a segregation. And then how to solve that? Then I, I, the solution that I found, it was approach the community and very, to be very honest and, and open about uh, how the, the regulatory system for historic preservation in the country was not uh, was not good enough to manage issues and symbolic aspects that belonged to the to to the African Brazilian heritage, and then at the moment then in the moment that we opened that for the community, uh, we in, in the very beginning was hard, but then after a time we were able to start really good the dialogue and conversation. And as uh, maybe you know that, but in Brazil, the African um, uh, religions are still, still very strong. And we have a very present symbolic from the uh, African roots. And that was a really good way to find a space to, and, and to create a dialogue about how to recognize this African heritage and how to open that to uh, to the whole community and then how to create, uh, the, how it could be, sorry, how, how it could have a really important potential for the, not only for the local community, for the, the city, but also to the country. And then in a very quick way, Valongo became one very important center for discussions in the city in Brazil about uh, uh, racial issues. And then we start to support also the local community and their organizations. And then we were able to create a network associated with the Valongo War. And then we, uh, we in some kind of reparation, 
uh, we start also to offering this uh, uh, re uh, refurbished spaces to the local community. And that was a very, that, uh, that work had a really important impact on, uh, on, on, on me and, and, and I became very uh, connected with this local community. And because that also, also we, we did a lot of uh, uh, interesting ideas, also had the opportunity to, to work uh, when uh, Sarah Zil, that started from New Orleans and, and then Sarah visited us in Rio and she could collaborate with us in that process of creating a specific landscape design for the Valongo War. And because of this, all this intense debate, all this intense uh, uh, recognizing failures and recognizing how the, the uh, inequalities in the process, uh, I think uh, the, the idea of Valongo became a, a, a world heritage, it, it became very strong. And then just uh, three years after that, uh, UNESCO recognized uh, Valongo War as a world heritage. Uh, and it, it was uh, very important for the, uh, for the local community, but it's, 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 it's not a finished uh, 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 work till now. We still had a lot of things to do especially related with the archaeological uh, 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 found that we, we, we discover in the place. It's something that we are, uh, at the moment that I'm back in the city hall, the city hall, I'm still working in this project, the idea of creating an open space for archaeological uh, uh, exhibitions and, and maintenance and studies and research in Rio's downtown. Uh, one important thing that I think that I, I, I think I could contribute to my city. It was also uh, improve the the quality of the of the built environment in downtown. At the moment that we were able to remove this elevated highway, this elevated highway it it it, it crossed downtown. It was a five kilometers extension. And at the moment that we remove that, we create a, a new comprehension for downtown and, and we open a lot of public space and spaces for not only the park area, but also in the historic area uh, and, and opening space for bike lanes and for pedestrian areas. And also uh, like other cities, also having our Calatrava, it, which is um, um, a very successful museum in, in the city. It's a museum devoted to environmental discussion. But the most important thing, in my opinion, was how at the moment, how we were able to reconnect with the water, the Guanabara Bay, uh, at the moment that we remove the, the elevated highway. And somehow um, the city, once again became once again a friend of the, the Guanabara Bay. It's something that it was um, very common in the past of the city. Uh, we, we, the city of Rio, uh, it's always associated with beaches and, and, and the landscape, but the city was, since the beginning, the city was a port city, a city devoted to the port activities. And, and especially all these, uh, interesting outdoor lifestyle, uh, which became uh, uh, famous for the city, it's because of this connection with the water. And another uh, work that I, uh, that I did, it was also, uh, it's uh, how to improve uh, uh, places for uh, young people in downtown. I, I think it's really important to, to bring young people to, to downtown again. And I think just uh, visit this place. It was the, the Carioca Design Center and also the Studio X. And the Chira Dance Square, it became one of the, the center for uh, design discussion in, in the city. And I'm very proud of, uh, do, of uh, having uh, contribute on that. Also, how to foster discussions about graphic design. And that was the carnival uh, uh, in the square uh, uh, after uh, we removed the fences of the square. So uh, 
then I, I, I'm very uh, connect with the history of downtown of Rio and very devote to uh, bring uh, buildings to life again, how to, uh, to do renovations and, and dealing with this very uh, 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 challenging uh, exercise, which is also a design exercise, but also a, a bureaucratic exercise and also a finance exercise. And then I understand the, uh, how uh, giving, uh, just by giving a, a little amount of money to, to owners of historic buildings, we could support them in doing renovations. And we won a national prize because of this program. Uh, it's so, uh, 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 I have been trying to, to, to create a, a, a more sustainable way to bring uh, uh, life back to, to, to Rio downtown. I really believe that places are research and it's, it's not only a matter of a built environment, but especially how to take care of public space and also devote myself to help my colleagues in City Hall to understand all the complexities of the public space. And we develop a, a, a really interesting program to, uh, to find solutions to maintain. It's something that sometimes designers don't think about it. Architects don't, don't pay attention to maintain in conservation. It is something that I devote a lot of energy for it. And also how to use, um, simple technological solutions uh, like uh, using WhatsApp, the, the, the chat app to, uh, to talk with uh, communities in downtown. And that worked out quite well when we were able to create a system, a very simple system, when uh, the local community, the inhabitants of downtown, the residents of downtown, they could uh, dialogue with us in City Hall. And, that was also a really fascinating work uh, dealing with a local community and asking them to, 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 to be engaged in that in process of uh, reshaping downtown. And I have been trying to work in, in that definition. Uh, how to be a, a designer uh, engaged with the holistic city. What means the holistic city? Um, means understanding the full uh, 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 aspects of city, which is the built environment, but it's also social issues, uh, symbolic issues, uh, the transition from the past to the present to the future, uh, understanding the different ages of people, the sh children, uh, young people, the elderly, uh, and also understanding the role of the, the many things and also the role of businesses in downtown. And I'll, also I, uh, we create our special program also to support traditional businesses and how to bring back uh, uh, interesting uh, receipts and, 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 uh, and foods from the past to the city. And that was a, a very interesting program. The moment that I started to work with the small business National uh, Department uh, uh, in the way to, to bring back uh, this, uh, this quality of the, the, this network of businesses in downtown, uh, creating a, a, a guide to shop and also uh, uh, improving the skills of the owners of traditional uh, uh, business in downtown. Also recognizing them, giving them signs and plates and also creating uh, apps for uh, to discover the, the city itself. And then um, I understand that uh, it was necessary to improve the housing. And that was a huge frustration uh, because uh, in charge of the historic preservation department, I was not able to find housing solutions. Although I, I understand when, when we create an interesting, um, a very powerful uh, master plan to house uh, 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 to increase the house supply in downtown, but uh, but I couldn't manage that because of the bureaucratic city uh, organization for the city hall, and 
that was a very frustrating uh, aspect in, 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 in my work. But then after a while, and, and I, I understand that was also important to, to talk about to Bernicians, to the, the society, uh, the whole society, not only Rio, but in the whole country. And then uh, I was invited to run a, a column in the newspaper. And for more than three years, I run a weekly column uh, in one of the most, uh, one of the biggest newspaper in the country. I always talk about urban issues and, 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 and cities and, and planning. And because of that, I was invited to do the curatorship of the, for the, the, the Brazilian Pavilion in Venice Biennale in 2016. And after, uh, after that, I was again appointed for the city hall, that, that time in charge of the planning department. That means that now I have a, a full toolbox to find solutions to housing in downtown. And that's something that I would, I would like to show to you now. Uh, and uh, we are now devoted to this revived plan, which is basically looking to uh, a way uh, the, the pandemic, it, it hit it, the downtown, especially the, 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 the office spaces, very hard way in the Hills downtown, which is this uh, that's the, 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 the area for uh, Hughes downtown in the city. It's the, it's the lowest demographic density in the city. It's uh, five kilo, square kilometer, almost six square kilometers with only uh, 40,000 inhabitants. And, and I understand that the central business di district, it needs to be uh, rethinked and also reshaped and there is a huge opportunity to, uh, to increase uh, mixed use buildings in the city and also to mix housing into by doing the retrofit of corporate spaces. And that's really important because we got the highest concentration of jobs in downtown of Rio. And especially when you look to the areas, uh, the surroundings of the downtown, we got a, a really good connection for public transportation and this really uh, this highest job and density the metropolitan area it it it, it can it cannot be uh, uh, missed and we uh, and and uh, bringing uh, uh, taking care of this, this 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 downtown it's not only a matter of history, it's really a matter of supporting the economics uh, for the, the whole city. And that's the solution that we, we create. Uh, sorry, this, uh, this slide is in Portuguese, what I'm going to explain to you. Uh, we create a solution to developers. We did a lot of research. Then we, we, we understand that the last 30 years, developers don't, don't produce any kind of housing in downtown but they are eager to do more housing other uh, uh, sectors in the city. And then we create these systems uh, when uh, at the moment that developers, they do, uh, if they do 100 uh, square meters of, of new residential units in downtown, uh, or if they do 100 square meters for affordable rent in downtown, then they can uh, build more in other areas of the city. Uh, they got the right to build more. It doesn't mean that they, uh, they are fully allowed to build, to build more, but we give them the opportunity to build more in other areas, especially in the areas with the, the real estate is really hot in the town. Uh, but allowing them to, to do that, then we ask, they must pay for do it. And, and how they pay? And they pay make investments in downtown. It's, um, uh, uh, it's, it sounds complicated, but it's very easy. Basically, we create a, a, we create a, a, a cross building potential uh, and, and then find a way to attract developers to produce uh, housing, residential uh, units uh, in downtown again after 
30 years. And it's working quite well. And, and because essentially we are going to allow them to build more where they are looking for a build more. And by doing that, they have to pay by doing affordable housing in, the, in downtown. That was a, a really fascinating process, uh, not only finding financial solutions, but also dealing with the community, uh, dealing with uh, the, the owners of businesses, uh, the managers of corporate towers in downtown, also with the public sector, and, and also running uh, 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 doing inquiries uh, uh, and doing a research uh, uh, using internet for that. And we have a really uh, high rate of participatory process uh, doing these uh, uh, inquiries uh, in downtown with more than uh, 5,000 people collaborating and then more than 3,000 3, people collaborating in our researchers, our research and also uh, improve the quality of the public space and also find, uh, uh, try to, to, to looking for uh, data for el electricity consumption in downtown in a way to measure the vacancy in downtown. It's really hard to understand and measure vacancy uh, uh, in office space or, in, in, or even in the built environment in downtown. Uh, and then we got, uh, we have access to, to, to the uh, a database for the uh, electricity uh, company in the city. And that allow us to understand which sectors of the city of downtown was losing uh, population uh, during the pandemic. And we did a lot of research, uh, researching uh, the, the real estate sector, all the, the taxes in downtown, and really having a full, uh, a deep comprehension of uh, the, why downtown is not producing housing in city. And that's the, the thing that we are looking uh, for. Uh, it's uh, it, rebuilding these buildings, uh, these uh, uh, ruins as, as uh, housing opportunities again. And this is something that we just, uh, we just launching, uh, we just launched that uh, let me check my time. I'm, I'm running late. I'm, I'm about to finish. Uh, uh, it's a 3D platform. It's a way to, to following the retrofit. So all the red uh, buildings in this map means that these are new residential areas and we uh, new residential units. And three months uh, after the, this new law, we have now uh, uh, three, uh, five, 123 uh, residential units under approval process in downtown. And developers are really excited about this possibility of uh, uh, bringing uh, housing to downtown again. And because of that, that means that our, we, are, we are going to have funds to do affordable uh, units in downtown uh, as well. So we, we have now a plan for uh, producing uh, more than 500 affordable uh, units in the same place. So uh, we create a solution, uh, uh, giving the developers the opportunity to build more. And by doing that, uh, we, uh, we capture the, this value uh, by increasing the affordable, affordable units in the same place, in, in the same downtown. Uh, another important uh, uh, Part of my work, it's uh, finishing the new master plan for the whole city. Uh, as I said before, because of the, the, the urban sprawl in the city of Rio, the city has to deal with um, th this picture. It's, um, it's, it, it's, um, it's a subdivision done by uh, a militia. Militia, it's um, a kind of um, a criminal activity, some kind of mafia some kind of mob. And this is really hard to fight against. And, and we are uh, doing a new master plan to uh, avoiding this rhetorical zoning that was so common in the past uh, with, a, a very, with a lot of lack of effect effectiveness. And then 
uh, rezoning the city improve the building potential along the transport corridors in the city, doing uh, a really uh, a very effective uh, uh, TOD for the city of Rio. And especially once again, looking for downtown, but not only downtown, but looking for this, uh, uh, the surroundings of downtown very well uh, served uh, for, uh, by public transportation, but it's an area, a region that has been missing uh, uh, development, development over time, uh, especially because it's very connected with favelas. And then to finish, and uh, we are also developing a new technology to uh, find a way to, to connect favelas with the city. I'm very concerned about the digital uh, divide of our favelas. Favelas don't have Google Street View, as you can see in this picture. One of the, the biggest favelas in the country, Rocinha, um, more than uh, 100, uh, uh, 100 uh, sorry, uh, 50, uh, 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 15,000 uh, inhabitants and they don't have any kind of uh, 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 good uh, street view or even uh, 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 a really good representation. They don't have a really good maps. So um, this is something that I, uh, I start to develop and working with the MIT Sensible City Lab. And, yes. and we, uh, we have been using jazz. We have been using a LiDAR scanning uh, in a way, in, to, to build uh, a, a digital twin for favelas. And by doing that, uh, we are aiming to, to create a computational uh, solution to make possible to, uh, to read, to create a morphometric for these favelas. It's something that uh, it's really uh, excited, something that we have been working since the beginning of the year. Uh, we were selected in the Bloomberg Mayor's Challenge with this idea and something that I'm very excited about. It. And, it, it, and that means also that uh, it's also a way to attract young people from favelas to technology and especially to code. That's it. It was a really long presentation and, and I, I, I love to share all these things that, that I'm, I'm doing here in Rio. Thank oh, you very much. Uh, Washington, thank you so much. That was a tour de force of uh, so much. Um, and I, I, I'm really shocked. There's just so much going on. I feel so disconnected. Uh, you, you don't go to a place over for a few years because of COVID. You just feel like so much is passing you by. Um, I have a few questions, but then I really want to turn it over um, to um, our audience uh, who are architects, urbanists, uh, real estate developing students we we have a great diversity in of our own programming at tulane uh, in the school of architecture that i think will have benefited greatly from your lecture i want to sort of back up in a way where you started with the the critique of mina casa mina vita a massive multi-billion dollar production of four million homes that has been long challenged for its lack of quality and and then for everyone's benefit perhaps it's worth reflecting that Henri Lafave's, you know, post-Marxist vision for the right to the city was actually formally codified in Brazil, right? It actually became part of the law uh, of how you think about this. And I wonder, you know, where that fell short in terms of where did design fall short? We were able to sort of take that, the impetus of the right to the city and, and, and commodify housing and architecture in a way um, that lost measures of quality and design and one, how did that fall short? And two, in your revitalization of downtown, how are you managing design? How are you managing quality? Um, the quantifications of transferable development rights and your financial modeling is impressive, but I'm curious, you know, where did the institutions fall short and where do you begin to, in your role, manage the quality of design? Thank you, thank you, Jess. That's those are really good questions. Um, uh, because of this uh, new, uh, this new democracy uh, that I that I showed to you, that 
it's uh, I'm, I'm the first generation of the new, the new democracy in the country. Our, uh, the, the, the Brazilian constitution mentioned for six times the right to house. So it's, it's impressive, we, it's a beautiful law, but we, what we are doing in practice and the, the implementation of, of housing is really terrible. And that happened in Minha Casa Minha Vida, basically uh, creating a really good subsidized to, to construction companies. And, and, and that happened just because Minha Casa Minha Vida was uh, conceived just after the 2008 financial crisis. So, so actually the Minha Casa Minha Vida it was create, to create jobs and, and, and having ho ho homes as a consequence of uh, fostering the economy. In that way it works. Uh, it was really good for the economy but really terrible for cities. There is a lot of papers and studies using, uh, even using uh, image for satellites showing that Minha Casa Minha Vida not only sprawled the city, but also produced sometimes a leapfrog effect. Uh, we have uh, uh, Minha Casa Minha Vida condos uh, uh, far away from the, the outskirts of, of the city. That means that that subsidize didn't pay attention for the location issue and also for the infrastructure. It was a very easy subsidize to construction companies and the rule of, and then it became a very political power in the whole country, really good for elections. And that means that uh, no one in the political environment wants to really try to talk against Minha Casa Minha Vida. It doesn't matter if you are a left, wing or a right wing because uh, what kind of politicians don't want to give house to people during the weekend and especially giving housing to 3,000 families just in just one uh, weekend and, and then Minha Casa Minha Vida uh, had a, a huge impact in the in the real estate in the outskirts of city because uh, it, that means that cities start to having this inorganic growth for the land. The land became hot because of Minha Casa Minha Vida, and that's when we start to see a much more complex uh, issue uh, uh, with Minha Casa Minha Vida, like condos uh, done by uh, criminals, like, uh, like the picture that I showed to you. And so uh, Minha Casa Minha Vida didn't pay attention to design. So uh, what I understand, uh, the thing that I'm, I'm doing right now in downtown, it's really, it's uh, find a, a really finance uh, solution to attract developers basically to do retrofit. And by doing retrofit, that means just that uh, we are going to uh, rehabilitate the, 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 the built environment. It's, uh, that means that at least the design it's guaranteed by the historic preservation. And we have uh, institutions who are running the historic preservation taking care of, of it. But in the case of, the, in the, case of the, the city plan, it's something that I'm working right now. Uh, we plan to, to launch uh, a design competition for this affordable housing. And it's something that it's a really challenge for me right now. It's find a solution to, to because uh, we don't have social rent in the country. Uh, all, all the idea of housing policies in Brazil since the 30s and the 60s and the 80s is still based on providing property and not providing access to the city. Uh, although the constitution says, says that, that it, that is the rights to, to the city. And, and it's something that it's, uh, I have been dealing with um, uh, uh, lawyers and finance uh, 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 people trying to find a way to create a, a, a rent, a social rent program for the city. It's a really a challenging thing that, that I'm doing right now. And, and I'm planning to, to bring the design aspect by uh, uh, inviting architects to do a competition. That's, that's what I'm planning. All right, Washington, listen, I have so many questions, but I really want to open it up uh, to our audience here. Uh, one of my questions actually that I really wanted to get to um, in context and really acknowledging your work in, in historic pr uh, preservation and the tremendous work uh, with the Longo Wharf is like, 
well, what, where does historic preservation feed into Baja de Juca or favelas themselves? Like, where does, is there some elements of the cultural dimensions of favelas that should be preserved in terms of historic preservation? Um, and what dimensions of that architectural legacy that are outside the domain of, of modernism or the domain of the, the dimensions of architecture which we value in popular terms, how do we preserve that and think about that? But I'm gonna leave that aside because I think that's a controversial question. And I don't wanna put you on the spot. What I do wanna do is open it up to Kazim Coyote. Kazim, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, uh, if you can uh, ask your question, please, Kazim. All right, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the wonderful presentation. I hope you can hear me. Yes, yes, please, please ask your question. You're open. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I want to. Uh, I want to know more practically how how affordable housing works. Uh, putting into context uh, the scenario in downtown, how how you uh, how you are able to to leverage all the resources to make affordable housing, like to make it affordable, really. How does it work? I would like you to shed more light on that, sir. Right, so maybe if I could just interpret Good. real quickly uh, or extend a part of that question is, um, Washington, and I hope I'm interpreting this well, but uh, it's one thing to produce that affordable housing, but how do you preserve the affordable dimensions of that housing? Uh, yeah, that's, that's difficult. Uh, we, and especially because we, we don't have the, the idea of affordability in the, the housing policies in the country. As I said before, everything is based on the rule, the historical rule of government in Brazil. It's or the government's building direct or giving subsidies to construction companies. Um, since the 30s, Brazil had been uh, creating property and not uh, housing. And, and, and it's not working. And favelas are, are somehow a consequence of that. And, then um, uh, my basic idea, uh, the moment that we are uh, just jump into the arena of an, an, how to craft a new uh, public policy, it's um, uh, all these uh, residential units that uh, it's happening right now in downtown are market rate. Uh, uh, that's why we create a really, uh, a really exciting solution for developers. Uh, to really have a massive production. That's one way to really try to control the price. Let's have as much as possible retrofit in downtown. And what's going on right now, it's, it's because of the owners of uh, office buildings. And basically the office buildings are empty. The owners don't know what to do. And now they are looking to, to our program as, as a good solution to create more mixed used buildings. We don't have mixed use and buildings in downtown. Buildings are or residential or fully uh, office. And now there is a lot of owners consider that, oh, maybe doing a mixed use could be good for both sides. And, but uh, in a way to try to control the, 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 the affordability, Kazim, uh, uh, we are planning also if, if the developer wants to produce affordable housing, that means housing for rent, uh, we give them the, the best uh, uh, possibilities of building potential in other areas. Once again, I, I want to use the developers' in, in, interesting, uh, interest in, in, in for building more in other areas to, to produce some affordability in downtown. And by doing that, they all have to pay because they have to pay for uh, to, to the building potential that were given to them. And the money that they, they pay to the city hall, the city hall is going to produce social route, uh, housing. Um, basically the city hall is going to produce housing for, uh, for uh, households of three uh, minimum wage, uh, 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 three salaries of minimum wage. 
-hmm. And then we have the, the, the market, if the market wants doing to six, uh, 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 a household for six salary uh, uh, minimum wage. And then we have the market rate. It's something that it's, it's happening right now. And, and, and everything's possible because uh, we offer for the real estate sector in Rio a really good solution to, to, to do housing in downtown. Supply, 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 supply. Okay, we've got another question yeah. from uh, Manul Gunagoyeva. I, I apologize, Manul, but please take it on with your question. Yeah, my question is, um, are you guys thinking about an improved MEP, like all the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing? Uh, what part is this, you know, of your, of your large scale project, um, specifically in favelas? And, and when is it going to be a priority across the whole city? Because I, I know that, you know, a lot of this, uh, uh, you know, plumbing is actually going into the bay. Um, and before this is being resolved, you know, there is absolutely, you know, low reason to build housing that, you know, end, end up in the, in, the, in the water or in the surrounding area. Yeah, and I just and want to, really I want to sorry, I just want to yeah, extend sure. on that, you know, environmental quality, but also sustainability. What, where is this playing out in, in infrastructural, but also is the, uh, is the que great question, how is this playing out in, yeah. in, in fundamental environmental impact? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a really good question, um, and also gives me the opportunity to mention that um, one year ago we got a new a national uh, we got a new sanitation national act uh, uh, allowing the private sector to 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 went into the to the sanitation uh, uh, market. We don't have that uh, sanitation in Brazil was. Uh, only done by, by, by government, and now it's possible to the, to the private sector. We had a huge debate for almost 10 years about that, about uh, water supply by private sector, etc. and now it's, it's working, it's working. It, it seems that it, it appears that it's, it's going to work quite well. And that means also that they should also uh, provide uh, water and sanitation to favelas. But that's something uh, also really important to mention that because um, he was the, the, the pilot program for the World Bank in, 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 in favelas uh, uh, uplifting and providing uh, infrastructure to favelas. But look, infrastructure, it's a rigid uh, structure and favelas are a flexible structure and it's a plastic, always growing. And that means that at the moment that favelas are always growing, that means the infrastructure is not enough. After 10 years, you have to rebuild the infrastructure. Um, this is something that during my time at Harvard and also, uh, 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 and, and also taking class with, with Jess uh, 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 and thinking about this, how to uh, find a, 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 a better solutions to, uh, to deal with that. Uh, I start to realize that uh, uh, it's a geometrical problem to favelas because uh, each house into a favela is a single event. Uh, I'm talking to you right now from my apartment. It's a three bedroom apartment. That means that my neighbor below me, he lives in the same place, a same typology. And that means that um, uh, in the formal city, people live into some kind of rational basis for the urban form. But in favela, it's totally different. Each house, it's totally different and it's unique. That means that impossible to find a regulatory process in such a complex uh, geometrical built environment. And then I realized it's so interesting because I, I use a lot of LIDAR scanning for historic preservation. And uh, LiDAR scan is really good to, to capture an aspect from the, uh, to capture as a built form from the past. And then I start to think that we could use that also to favelas. And it's fascinating uh, because it's also really helpful to measure the quality of ventilation in the public space and also in the favelas, in, 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 the, in the units, in the, in, in the dwellings, because 
uh, using the, 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 at the moment that you are able to make a digital twin, you can really, you can measure the size of the windows, the size of the, of the air ventilation, the insulation, you can really achieve really precise indicator for indicators for the, the quality of the of the uh, environmental aspects for the housing and it's something that uh, we are really really excited about it and 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 we have been showing that to a lot of people and and i and we i discovered that that uh, nobody uh, have been this kind of use for lidar scanning well thank you washington it's really i just I wish we could go on uh, and on. There's so much to cover here. I just want to note uh, for my students, pay attention because you may learn something useful in class somewhere along the way uh, that shapes the future of, of world cities. And so Washington, we're really so privileged to have you. Uh, and thank you very much uh, uh, for joining us tonight. And we hope that uh, you will come back or maybe ha have us in Rio uh, at some point in time sooner than later. Um, and I want to acknowledge uh, there's many relationships between Tulane and the, uh, across the Caribbean and across South America. And in fact, one of our uh, scholars is a Mellon Sawyer postdoctoral fellow, Pamela Sertson, at the uh, Newcomb Art Department at Tulane University, uh, is leading a program called Sites of Memory, New Orleans and Rio de Janeiro, exploring urban displacement in Treme and Volongo Wharf. Uh, and you can go to the website um, www.sitesofmemorynola.org and you will find a whole array of programming uh, that's connecting New Orleans uh, and uh, Volongo Wharf, Treme, Volongo Wharf, wonderful, wonderful programming. Uh, that, so we hope you will be able to take advantage of that uh, in uh, New Orleans, actually in December. I think the first big event in the film uh, is launching in December. So uh, be sure to join us on Monday, November 29th at 515 in the Kendall Cram Lecture Hall for our next in-person lecture as we welcome Michael Meredith, co-founder of Moss and Associate Dean at Princeton University School of Architecture for the Allen Eskew Endowed Lecture. But for now, let us all thank Washington Farjado, the Commissioner of Planning of Rio de Janeiro. Thank you, Washington, so much for joining us and for such a wonderful lecture. Thank you, Washington. Thank you very much, Jess. It was, was a pleasure. And yes, Rio and New Orleans are uh, cities uh, very connect. And, and I, uh, although I'm not in the academic, but uh, I would be really happy to, to, to try to establish any kind of collaboration with the city. And it's also related with the, 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 the history, the culture, and also the challenge that, that, that both cities have to face. I'm, I'm, thank you very much for this invitation. It was a pleasure. It was an honor to, to collaborate with your series. And really good to see you again, my friend. Oh, yes. Very good. All right. We'll see you soon, Washington. See you soon. Take care, everybody. Mm -hmm.